بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإن جاء ذاك على أن تشرك بي ما ليس لك به علم فلا تطعهما وصاحبهما في الدنيا معروفا واتبع سبيل من أناب إلي ثم إلي مرجعكم فأنبئكم بما كنتم تعملون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين Dear viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As you know, we are talking about how to treat neighbors so far, we have given many lectures on the rights of neighbors and how to deal with neighbors and how to treat them. In our last lecture, we talked about the instances and examples of how to treat neighbors kindly. Islam advises us to treat our neighbors with kindness. Islam tells us to treat our neighbors with affection. The question arises, how can we deal with our neighbors affectionately? How can we treat them kindly? To answer this question, I give many examples and I give many instances of kind treatment of neighbors. For example, I said we can, first of all, we can avoid disturbing our neighbors. If we avoid disturbing our neighbors, harming them, giving them some sort of difficulties, we are actually observing their rights. We are actually dealing them with kindness. But of course, if we happen to disturb them by our noises, by the pollution we make, and by the difficulties we create, of course, in such cases, we are not observing the rights of our neighbors. I also pointed out that one of the instances of not disturbing your neighbor is don't inquire uh, after your neighbors. In other words, don't spy on, on your neighbors. Spying on neighbors is not good and it is not a good thing. And that's why there is a clear um, word and the Holy Quran, it forbids us from spying on others. It is not good to spy on others, just as it is not good to backbite others. Backbiting and spying on others, both are bad. Allah says in his Al-Mizan that backbiting in spying are of the same root and are of the same origin. And both are forbidden in Islam. He says the philosophy why 
these things are forbidden in Islam is that if you do any one of them, it is as if you eat from the corpse of your dead brother. You don't like to eat from the corpse of your brother. You don't like to eat from the dead body of your brother. Just as you don't like to eat from the dead body of your brother, you cannot like backbiting others, and you cannot like spying on others. Both are bad, and since both are bad, the, uh, the same philosophy can be applied to both. If you backbite, it is as if you are eating from the corpse of your brother. Again, if you are spying on someone, it is as if you are eating from the dead body of your brother and your sister. Since you abhor such kind of things, since you strongly dislike such kind of things, therefore you should refrain from backbiting and you should refrain from spying on others and from uh, trying to know about the secrets of others. It is of no use to know about the secrets of others. And if you come to know about the secrets of others, and if you uh, publish the secrets of others, what will happen? They will retaliate. The same will happen with you. Your secrets will one day be disclosed. Everybody will one day come to know about your secrets. So for the sake of yourself, for the sake of your improvement, for the sake of your face, you should not indulge in seeking other secrets. That is uh, one of the instances of avoiding disturbing our neighbors. Another example which I provided before was we should give financial support to our needy neighbors. When we understood and when we realized that some of our neighbors are suffering from certain, uh, from certain difficulties, we should try to help them financially. And it is very much good and it is very much recommended in Islam. And thirdly, we must uh, give our neighbors uh, moral support and spiritual help. It is also very important by taking part in their funeral, by visiting them at their doors, and by doing such kind of thing, things, we can uh, render our help to our neighbors. But now the question arises as to why should we help our neighbors? What is the use of helping our neighbors? Why should we spend on improving on our relations with our neighbors? Does it benefit us in any way? Is it of any use? Does it help us improve? This is a very big question, of course. To answer it requires a lot of time. But anyway, in order to give certain hints, I, will, I should say that it is recommended and it is advised in Islam to do good to your neighbors because of certain philosophies and because of certain uh, reasons and arguments. First of all, we should know that uh, we are of the same origin. Of course, we, we see things differently. We think that, for example, we are white, our neighbors are black. We think we are Europeans, for example, and our neighbors are Asians. We, are, we think that we, are, we belong to this country and our neighbors belong to that country, and so on and so forth. But if we uh, think deeply, we will uh, understand and we will accept that we are of the same origin. All human beings are of the same origin. Blacks and whites are of the same origin. Europeans and Africans are of the same origin. Asians and Europeans are of the same origin. And there is a verse in the Holy Quran that emphasizes on this fact that all human beings are of the same origin. Look at this beautiful verse in the Holy Quran. Ya ayyuhannas, 
اینا خلق ناکم من ذکرین و اونسا او پیپل او پیپل او هیومن بینگز I have created you from a male and female from a single male and a single female the interpreters of the holy quran point out that her zakar and unsa refer to adam and hawa and it were and we are created of these two single uh, human beings وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل and we have made you tribes we have made you families لتعارفوا in order to know each other in order to have an understanding of each other you see that if there is no variety if all are the same it will be very much difficult to gain any knowledge suppose if there were no mountains and if all the earth was the same having no difference no part of the earth was different from any other part of it then what would happen it would have been very much difficult to spot any area it would have been very much difficult to know about the world we know about the world our world because of the differences we observe for example our area is different from your area our area is mountainous your area is not we are located on a plain area and you are not so these are the signs of differences and based on these differences and based on these signs we gain knowledge of course this uh, uh, holds true in, reg in regard with human beings if all human beings were of the same color and were of the same language and were of the same characteristics then it would have been very much difficult to differentiate about different persons and different individuals and different tribes it was very difficult to classify them and it was very much difficult to differentiate them while it is very much important it is very much significant to know about the about human beings so first of all we must accept that it is very important to know about human beings because if we don't know about human beings we cannot maintain relations with them and there will be no society there will be no international community all these things are based on knowledge so we must obtain knowledge about human beings obtaining knowledge about human beings and to gain knowledge about human beings is based on differences there must be differences if there is no difference of color if there is no difference of language then it is it would be very much difficult difficult to gain knowledge so knowledge is based on differences therefore we can conclude th that there must be differences there must be varieties otherwise we would not be able to gain knowledge and if there were no amount of knowledge it would have been very bad for us our situation would have been very much miserly and that is why the holy quran says that i have made you tribes i have made you families i have made you nations in order to let you understand about each other in order to let you know about each other this is the philosophy of the differences in creation inna akramakum indallahi atqakum no the most honorable of you before god is he who is the most pious among you the most pious is the most honorable with god
Here, uh, God actually provides us with a criterion of uh, making differentiation or making difference. It is not wealth that uh, actually is important. And it is not race that uh, matters. And it is not language that is of prime importance. Rather, what is important is piety. What is important is spiritual dignity. If you are spiritually dignified, if you are spiritually pure, if you are spiritually perfect, then you are a good person. Even if you are economically poor, even if, if your economic condition is not up to the mark, what is important is your spiritual state of affair. So God talks about these kind of things because we human beings, we spend our time on competing and gaining worldly gains. We compete each other in gaining reputation. We compete each other in get, get, getting richness. We compete each other in getting uh, property and uh, etc. But according to God, according to divine values, such kind of items are not important. We should not spend our time competing each other in such kind of things. We must spend our time that is very precious in gaining spiritual values. It is by getting spiritual values that we can improve we can attain perfection. So anyhow, we are, according to this verse, we are created of the same male and the same female. And because of this, there is no reason to be uh, uh, proud of our race or of our color. Because we are of the same race and of the same color. So we are created of the same men, and therefore uh, we should not uh, look at neighbors uh, differently. We should look at him just as we look at ourselves. We should deal with our neighbors just as we deal with ourselves, because they are part of us. We are all of the same family, and of the same community, and of the same race. So why should we look at them differently? Why should we look down upon them? We should deal with them. We should treat them as, just as we treat ourselves. So this is the philosophy why we should treat our neighbors kindly. In addition to this, we can uh, produce another philosophy that is also very much important. You see, according to Islamic literature, uh, uh, we are uh, not only of the same male and female, we are actually one body. We are actually one existence and one being. And because of this, uh, we cannot uh, actually differentiate between different parts of ourselves. Just as we cannot differentiate between uh, our organs, our hands, our eyes, our legs, all are the same to us. We cannot differentiate between all these things. Just as we cannot differentiate hair, just as we cannot discriminate between our organs, we should not and we cannot discriminate between uh, members of human beings and be, uh, between different races that are there. Because we are just like one body, look at this, Mm, uh, narration from Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him. Uh, Imam Sadiq uh, rightly points out Al Mu'minu, Akhul Mu'min. A believer is uh, a believer is the brother of, of another believer. In other words, believers are brothers. Al Mu'minu, Akhul Mu'min, Kal Jasad Al Wahid. The believer is like a single body. If there is a pain 
in some part of your body, the whole body will tremble. The whole bo body will sense the pain. So we are like one body. And we are the organs in the different parts of a single body. And look at Saadi, the famous Iranian poet. He uh, mentions the content of this tradition in, uh, in a beautiful poem. He says, all human beings are parts of a whole. In creation, they are of the same essence and soul. All human beings are parts of a whole. Suppose there is a whole, we are parts of it. In creation, they are of the same essence and soul. Because in the, uh, in the process of creation, we have been created from a single essence and a single soul that is Adam and Eve. We are created from them. And it is because of this deep philosophy that we are of the, of the view that human beings are the same. Different communities are the same. Different races are the same. And we must deal with our neighbors. We must deal with others with kindness, with affection, just as we like to, uh, to deal with ourselves with affection, just as we like others to deal with, uh, with us uh, in terms of affection, in terms of kindness. So now let me, uh, to summarize uh, this uh, part, let me give you certain hints or certain tips about how to deal uh, with uh, neighbors and how to treat, the, treat them. Being good to neighbors is not uh, restricted to those who share the same building with you. Your roommate at the dorm is your neighbor. The person sitting behind you or next to you in a bus or at a bus stop is your neighbor. The meaning of neighbor uh, should be extended, it should be a little bit generalized. The one sharing your office at work is your neighbor. The person enjoying fresh air next to you in a public garden is also your neighbor. All these are your neighbors. When we are talking about neighbors, you have to take into account all these uh, kinds of neighbors. Another uh, tip uh, that is useful in uh, everybody touches this is to say, introduce yourself in your family to your neighbors. When you go to a new location, when you uh, move to a new lo uh, location, introduce yourself in your family to your, your neighbors. When you move into a new place or when, when new neighbors move in, uh, this introduction must uh, take place. This will also help to relieve any fear or tension they may have about you. Care for them. The third uh, tip is that care for your neighbors continually. Always care for them, especially at times of need and distress. Fourthly, in dealing with neighbors, it is safer to deal with uh, those of the same sex as yourself. This does not mean that you should stop socializing at work or, is, or is school with your non-Muslim workmates or classmates. Associate with them, but be aware of satanic snares. While socializing with Muslims, uh, be cautious of becoming too lenient at the expense of your creed and your faith and principles. And sixthly, we must uh, give you another uh, hint in this connection. In addition to sharing ideas with your neighbors, you can share meals with them, invite them, and also go to their houses. By inviting them, you can do this uh, kind of uh, action. Conduct mutual visit so that the families can interact in a constructive way. Uh, way, uh, go to their houses and invite them to come uh, to your houses. These are uh, good uh, points. While socializing with neighbors, present your religion, uh, your Islam in the best uh, possible way. 
uh, never try to misrepresent Islam. If you are faced with a difficult question or a distortion about Islam, do not be ashamed to stop for a while and tell them what you will try to con uh, and to tell them that you will try to contact a more knowledgeable person to seek the guidance and regarding with the issue posed. So this is uh, the manner of Islam. When you know about something, then give the answer and say that you know about it. But of course, you, if you don't know about anything, then proclaim that you do not know about it, and you should ask permission to ask a scholarly person about it, and to gain knowledge about it, and then uh, tell the uh, answer to that question. If your neighbors show, uh, neighbors show an interest in Islam, invite them to attend Islamic events and even to accompany you to, the, to a mosque to see what is, uh, what is it like. By doing such kind of things, of course, you can uh, show the uh, charms of Islam, you can show the attractions of Islam to non-Muslims, and by doing such kind of things, of, co of course, you can uh, disseminate your faith, you can propagate uh, your faith. Always keep in mind the mighty reward that is in the store for you in the hereafter when you show kindness to a neighbor. And believe it that if you behave kindly with your neighbors, God will give you the reward. And, re and your reward is there uh, in the hand of God and it will not be wasted. And based on this, I think so you can uh, uh, maintain a very good relation with your neighbors. And that is all about how to deal with our neighbor, your neighbors and the importance of uh, neighbors and the instances of how to deal with uh, neighbors. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> تك خاضعا ربي فكن لي فإن لم تعف عن ذنبي فمن لي فأنت الله مولانا الكريم